In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of reading labels and also give you some other recommendations for uh, controlling weight and so on. Uh, you will need this information for both the lab and the last test. Um, I've done the math here already just to give you an idea of what you're going to do and make it a little bit, go a little bit smoother. But here's a label, and this is for cinnamon graham crackers. Um, I want to go over, again, the basics of what all these things mean, so make sure you're taking decent notes. First of all, the first thing you need to look at is serving size. Uh, this serving size right here is eight crackers, and if you know graham crackers, each uh, one big cracker has four individual crackers, so this is actually two cracker sheets. Um, the biggest mistake people make with weight gain or gaining weight and not eating correctly is they don't look at serving sizes. So all the information that you see down here is based on one serving size, not, not the whole box, and that's a mistake a lot of people make. Um, so if you want to have an idea, that means there's 15 servings per container. The information here that each serving has 130 calories means that two cracker sheets have 130 calories. So if you wanted to figure out the total calories if you ate the whole box, you would take the number of servings in the box, which is 15, and multiply it by the calories per serving, and you would get 1950 calories. So actually that looks like a smiley face, it should be a sad face. That's a lot of calories if you eat the whole box. What you also notice here is it gives you the calories of fat that come from fat out of this 130 calories 25 calories come from fat. Um, that's reasonably accurate. I'm going to show you how to do it later on. Here it tells you how many grams of fat and then it tells you that one of the grams of fat is monounsaturated which means the um, which means there's one and a half fat grams missing which is probably trans fat acids. Uh, when this I use this label, this didn't have to have trans fatty acids on it. Chances are they have taken those trans fats out of the graham crackers based on what we discussed in the last video. Here you have cholesterol, which we'll talk about sodium. Carbohydrates, there are 24 grams of carbohydrates. Uh, 11 are sugar. One Less than one gram is fiber. That means the rest are complex carbohydrates. It's not on there, but that's what that means and there are two grams of protein. First thing I want to look at is right here, um, this 4%. This is the biggest mistake people make. They look at this food, and like I told you, less than 30% of your daily calories should come from fat. And what they think is, is that 4% of the calories from this food come from fat, and that's not true. Um, or they think that only 8% of the calories from this food come from carbohydrate. That is not true. What this number means, this number means if you are on a 2,000 calorie a day diet and you eat one serving of this food, it gives you the 4% of your total fat for the day. Let me say that again. What this is saying is if you are on a 2,000 calorie a day diet and you eat one serving of this food, you are getting 4% of the total fat that you should have for the day. Couple problems with that. Most people are not on a 2,000 calorie a day diet. Most of the women are probably less than that and most of the guys are probably higher. So what people have a tendency to do is to look at this number and say, this is great. This is less than 30%. That's not what that number means. Okay. Same thing down here for carbohydrates. It is not saying that 8% of the calories from this food are coming from carbohydrate. It again is saying that if you are on a 2,000 calorie a day diet and you eat one serving, you will get 8% of your um, carbohydrates for the day. So what can we use these numbers for? We can't use them for that. What I'm going to show you up here is how do you calculate what percentage of the calories come from each of the fuel nutrients. And I've done the math earlier to make it a little bit easier. What you do is you find the grams of fat, which is right here, 2.5. And remember I told you that for every gram of fat, you get 9 calories. So you take 2.5 times 9, and you get 22.5, which is reasonably close to this number that you see here. Some companies have gotten in trouble because they're, uh, they, this number is not accurate this is reasonably accurate. So then you take if 22.5 percent of the calories come from fat 
and you want to know the percentage, 22.5 calories out of 130, and there's your 130, come from fat, you'll get a number that looks like 0.17. You move the decimal over twice and you will find that 17% of the calories in this food come from fat. Okay. Same thing for carbohydrate. There's 24 grams. Remember there are 4 calories in a gram of carbohydrate. 96, 96 out of 130 gives you a number like 0.74. Move the decimal over twice. 74% of the calories from this food come from carbohydrate. So notice they don't match this 4%. 17% of this food calories are coming from fat. 74% are coming from carbs. So again, these numbers do not match. So you need to make sure if you're really interested in fat content and percent of calories coming from fat that you do this basic math in your head when you're shopping. For protein, we have 2 grams of protein. A gram of protein contains 4 calories, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 over 130, 0.06, move your decimal over, 6% of the calories come from protein. Most of the time when you're looking for calories or you're looking for healthy foods, you're focused on fat. Okay, You're focused on fat. So this, these three numbers together sh should equal close to 100%. Okay, should equal close to 100%. If they're a little off, it's not a big deal but they should be close to 100% if you did the math correctly. Okay, what can we use these percent daily value numbers for? We can use them, we can use them based on the 5 and 20% rule that you're going to look at, they're going to talk about in one of the other videos. We can look at it for things like cholesterol, we can look at it for things like fiber, and we can look at it for things like vitamin A, C, and so on. Okay. Cholesterol. It's going to tell you in the video, but if you're, the bad things are cholesterol and sodium. Those are the things you really want to pay attention to when you're looking at this percent daily value. For these bad things, you want the number to be less than 5%. If it's less than 5%, that, that means you're not getting too much cholesterol or too much sodium. If they are greater than 20%, then you are getting too much. This is, it is a source that is too high in cholesterol or sodium. Cholesterol you will only find in animal sources, so you're not going to see um, animal stuff in graham crackers, or at least you shouldn't. Sodium, um, you need to look at very closely, especially in low-cal foods. They will be very high in sodium. The foods that are most high in sodium are soups and ramen noodles, which I know is a thing that people in college students in college eat a lot of. So if this number is greater than 20% or this number is greater than 20%, it is not good. It, you're getting too much of it. Okay. Now, what about the good things? Well, we can look at fiber as the good things, and we can look at these vitamins down here. Okay. Oops, let me go back. If fiber, which is good for you, is less than 5%, then it is not a good source of fiber. If it's greater than 20%, then it is a good source of fiber. So these graham crackers are not a great source of fiber. You can also look down here. These are all below five per, oh, except iron. Um, six to tw if you go if you use the five and twenty rule, if it's like ten percent, that means it's a moderately good source or bad source of that food. So really, the only thing nothing in here is a good source. It's not a good source of vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, or iron, because it's not. None of these are greater than twenty percent. So low vitamins, okay, low fiber means it's not really the healthiest food to eat, especially since the carbohydrates are so high. So that's the basics of reading a label. And again, there are some other videos on the Blackboard site that you need to look at that will help you go through the exercises you need to. So what is healthy eating? Dieting constantly is not healthy eating. Healthy eating is when you maintain a regular diet and maintain a good weight. It is all basically comes down to calories in, calories out. If you take in more calories than you put out, then you're going to gain weight. Um, I'll give you an example. There was a nutritionist who taught at a university, and he tried an experiment. And the experiment he tried was he decreased his calories. He was eating like, oh, I don't know, 28, 2,900 calories a day. He decreased his calories by like seven or 800 calories a day 
to around the 2000 mark, but all he ate were Twinkies and Ho-Hos and crappy food. And so he ate all this crappy food, he weighed himself before, he only ate the crappy food up to 2000 calories a day. He did that for six months, and after six months he lost like 23 pounds. Not only did he lose weight, his good cholesterol went up and his bad cholesterol went down. Even though it was a high fat diet, his triglycerides actually improved. Now, he doesn't recommend that diet because in the long run he's not going to be getting a lot of nutrients. But what it does show is that the calories you take in versus the calories you put out is going to determine what your weight is. And apparently from what he did, it doesn't matter in what form those calories come from. Uh, one way to monitor your diet is using the food pyramid. This food pyramid has gotten more and more complicated over time. Um, it's just not easy to read. I just want to introduce you to it. And if you want to look it up, there's some uh, references you can look at. So this food pyramid kind of got mixed up. If you focus on your fat content and you also focus on your calories and your serving sizes. So one of the things that the typical American doesn't do well is uh, is judging what the serving size is. Restaurants tend to give you several serving sizes on a large plate. So what is the serving size of meat? We're going to look at different things. So red meat, whatever. Okay. From size, serving size of meat is going to be about the size of um, cards. And most people will eat more of that. Now if it's chicken, if it's grilled chicken, it tends to be lower in calories than let's say a steak. But again, we tend to, we tend to eat more than one serving size of meat. What is the serving size of pasta or rice? These are really calorie dense types of foods. It's only about the size of a tennis ball and, and that serving size is probably 120 to 150 calories and then you have to add whatever you put on it. Um, I bought these noodles from some, some one of my fellow faculty members daughter was selling these things and they had noodles and they were in little they look like little nests kind of like this picture on here and they were only a hundred calories per serving and I swear I could eat it in two bites so a serving size of pasta is not very big peanut butter peanut butter is pretty small a serving size and you're gonna get a good 120 150 calories in that um, and you have to watch your salt content on that and also your fat content Serving size of vegetables is pretty big, size of a baseball, and the big difference here is that the calorie content of that serving size is going to be very, very low. It's going to be in the 30 to 40 range as opposed to the 120 and 150 range that we looked at with other types of food. Um, potato. A serving size of potato is the size of a mouse. It's not very big and we have a tendency to eat pretty big potatoes and again 120, 150, 160 calories here and that's before you put anything else on it. If you have trouble finding the potato underneath the cheese and the bacon bits it's probably not a good choice uh, to eat the whole thing. Serving size of a pancake is about the size of a DVD or a CD. Again, not very big, not very big, not very big in a lot of calories, and again, most people don't eat one pancake, um, and then you add the syrup and the butter that you're placing on it. So again, very calorie dense. Serving size of cheese, this is, this is a really depressing one. The serving size of cheese is one cube, and that is about the size of a piece of di or of one dice, not a piece of dice, but a dice. So. What you need to do sometime is take one of the pieces of pizza that you eat and roll up the cheese part and you're going to find that it's probably going to be uh, much bigger than one cube. And a cube here is a good 100, 120 calories. So again, a very calorie dense type of food. Um, the kind you don't, don't deny yourself of it, but you need to watch your serving sizes. Serving size of fish is pretty big and about the size and most people don't know what a uh, checkbook looks like anymore but that is a checkbook and again good nutrients omega-3 fatty acids and not as calorie dense higher in fat but again it's an example of a good source of fat okay a good source of fat okay serving size of oil and this is where you have to be careful um, not very big okay so even your olive oil olive oil and canola oil the good oils we talked about they're calorie dense um, but again, they're the good sources, so you don't want a lot of them, but you do want some of them because they are healthy. Okay? They are healthy. Other recommendations for eating habits. 
Um, set up a plan that you can live with forever. These extreme diets do not work. I mean, yes, they work if you want to lose weight quickly, but there's a 99% chance you're going to gain that weight back. And if it's food you don't like or that you're not going to be able to live with for a long period of time, you don't want to use that kind of diet. Okay. Don't lose more than one or two pounds a week. Most diets will promise you that you'll lose more than that. But what happens with your metabolism, the, uh, the human metabolism is designed to deal with the lifestyle we had when we were living in caves. So if you go back thousands of years, what would happen is you would eat in large quantities for a while and then you would have to go a long period of time maybe with not a lot of food, let's say in the winter. So you you go out and you kill a woolly mammoth and you eat that woolly mammoth and you eat it and you eat it, but then you may go two or three months with very little food. And so what happens is to deal with those times of starvation, our metabolism slows down in order to maintain life. If you slow down metabolism, you don't lose as much weight. Our body is still designed for that, but we no longer have those times of starvation where we don't go with uh, food for a long period of time. So what happens is if you start to starve your body, you start to eat less than 1,200 or 1,300 calories a day, your brain says, ooh, there's no woolly mammoth. We're not going to eat for a while, and it slows your metabolism down. The problem with that is then when you do start to eat again, you will gain, uh, you will gain fat very quickly. So you can trick your body into not going into that slow metabolism by losing the weight slowly, by losing the weight slowly, one to two pounds a week, any more than that, and you start to screw up your metabolism. No severe calorie restriction, like I said, if you start to do that, your body's metabolism will automatically slow down. And again, when you start to eat, it will eat normally again. It will start. It will say to itself, "Ooh, we're eating. We need to store these calories because we may have to go into a starvation state again." A variety of foods. You want healthy foods. If there is a diet you may or may not heard of called the grapefruit diet, all you did was eat grapefruit, drink grapefruit juice, and consume coffee and very little else. That's not a realistic diet. Um, it can actually give you an ulcer because it's so acidic. Include exercise. One of the ways you can prevent your metabolism from slowing down is to exercise, which keeps your muscle mass, which keeps your metabolism going. Many diets don't want you to exercise because you won't lose weight as quickly. But you will also gain the weight back more quickly once you stop. So you want to restrict your calories somewhat, but then you also want to exercise to keep your muscle mass there. You don't want to lose muscle when you're losing weight. You want to lose fat. Don't use drugs. Um, any type of drugs that's as a stimulant, those kind of things, diuretics, they don't work. And in many cases, they can be pretty dangerous. Some of the stuff you see on TV, it's not regulated or tested by the FDA. So you don't necessarily know what you are getting. Don't deny yourself the foods you like to eat. If you completely deny yourself of certain types of food, chances are you will not maintain the healthy lifestyle of eating. There was a woman who would eat literally a pound of M&Ms a day, a bag, I don't know if it's a pound, but a bag of large M&Ms a day. What she did is she gave herself, when she went on her diet, she restricted herself, she got 10 M&Ms a day. She had lost about 50 pounds after six or seven months, and she would just give herself those 10 M&Ms a day. She could eat them all at once. She could eat them one at a time, spread them out. But again, she didn't completely restrict herself. She just did it in moderation. And your eating is about moderation. It's about moderating your calories, moderating your serving sizes, and using a variety of food and including exercise. I'll give you one example. Um, I had a student once in a fitness class, and he decided to give up pop. He drank like, oh, he said six or seven uh, soda pops, especially Mountain Dew, a day. By just giving that up, not changing anything else, he lost about 30 pounds in two months. And he didn't do anything else but take that high sugar, um, high sugar drink out of his diet. 